I'm Aaron Maté, sitting in for Jimmy Dore, here with American's comedian Kurt Metzger and the miserable liberal Steph Zamorano. And uh, it's the one-year anniversary of the Ukraine proxy war when Russia invaded. And let's take a look back. Here is Z Squirrel on Twitter, who says this, As the one-year anniversary of the war in Ukraine nears, I will never forget how the Western media class revealed their depraved racism in their coverage of it. <laughs> is this what I think it's going to be? Now with the Russians marching in, it's changed uh, the calculus entirely. Uh, tens of thousands of people have tried to uh, flee the city. There will be many more. People are hiding out in bomb shelters. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European. I have to choose those words carefully, too. You sure ah. do, buddy. <laughs> well, great job, by the way. Ah. A uh, so, city where you wouldn't expect that. When they say so that he invaded a sovereign nation, I always wonder, like, because they always say, well, Putin invaded a sovereign nation. Or, like, all these countries went in, or are they not sovereign? They mean a sovereign white nation that's vaguely connected to Europe. Exactly right. Right. Exactly right. Or hope that it's going to happen. So it's partly human nature, but they are not in denial. So what is NATO going to do if, you know, it's one thing for sarin gas to be used on people in faraway Syria who are Muslim and who are of a different cu culture? What is Europe going to do when it's on European soil done to Europeans? Are what? they going to intervene? Are Did the Azov Battalion deploy to CNN? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Blood and soil. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're going to keep sit standing back. And if they do intervene, how far are they willing to go? And are they willing to have a direct confrontation with Vladimir Putin, which is what he seems to want. There's rumors of a thermobaric bomb, which is sort of vacuum bomb, which to be fair, the US has used before in Afghanistan, but the idea of it being used in Europe is, is, is stomach churning. Mm -hmm. And now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. It's Robert Moore here in, in the studio. Me, I'm sorry. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's wow. missiles. That one's a bit. The other two sound like just, <laughs> you know, oblivious, imbecile liberal talk, but this one, wow. That's straight up Aryan Nazi talk. Like, uh, Do it, we, I, I, when I, I see children <laughs> with blonde hair, you know, what is that the 13 words creepy thing about, you know, we want to well, establish a future for white children? Yeah. Is that. <laughs> My buddy Big J used to have a joke. If you just took white out of that, it would just be like, oh, I established a future for children. That's nice. When you get the eye color, it gets a little extra. And his helicopters and his rockets. And so, of course, I, I understand and respect the emotion. What you are outlining there is this tension between longer term efforts to apply pressure to Vladimir Putin, such as financial sa sanctions, and the very immediate military threat which you're experiencing <laughs> yes, to blue-eyed, blonde children, white children. Okay, that's all the time we have, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so that's one aspect of the racism that the war in Ukraine has exposed, the complete contempt that our Western media voices have for global South countries that are bombed by the U.S. And now a uh, white country is being, white European country is being bombed and they're, they're outraged by this. But there's more d racist depravity, bigotry being exposed. There's also the bigotry against Russians. And here is ABC News celebrating a book burning against Russian culture inside Ukraine. Hi, I'm Patrick Rival with ABC News, and we're here in Kyiv, and we're at a paper recycling plant here. And the reason we're here is that we're watching hundreds of Russian books about to be pulped. You can see these men are chucking them into the chute, and then they will go up there and be pulped. There's really all types of books here. Just seeing him throw several volumes of Tolstoy, as well as his books here about the Soviet victory in World War II. The Soviet victory in World War II over the Nazis, who some Ukrainian fighters now worship. Uh, their hero is this guy, Bandera, who was a collaborator with the Nazis. So and good also, thing. Also, by the way, collaborator, because I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. Genocidal. Genocidal. Not yeah. collaborated like, you know, he got him a coffee. Oh, no, no, no. They, no. they participated <laughs> fully in murders of Poles and Jews. Absolutely. A lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And, but now, luckily for Ukrainians, they can pulp the books that document that history. Well, I like it. Uh, it's a good thing over these, because Russia, everyone knows Russian books are some of the worst books. <laughs> <laughs> books about Soviet tanks. Basically, this is part of an initiative 
by a bookshop in the center of Kiev where people can voluntarily bring Russian books they no longer want in their homes to be recycled and say that they're not simply destroying books, that they will be recycled and turned into something in their, in their words more useful. But obviously this is a pretty powerful symbol of Ukraine's rejection of Russian culture. Oh my God. The balls to think you're that much different than Russian culture. <laughs> at best alligators and crocodiles at best and of course this is a major reason why there's even a war to begin with because after the u.s back coup in 2014 the new coup government waged basically an assault on russian culture inside ukraine there are millions of people inside ukraine who identify with russia with family in russia they speak russian historically their regions were a part of russia and the new coup government tried to ban their language and encourage assaults on them. And that's a major reason why there's been a conflict in Ukraine going on since 2014. I can't. I hope in Ukraine that we, we help, we graciously help them rebuild to the Nazis there. Mm-hmm. They got to, they got to take all this stuff that they hate, like real trans, it's called transcraine for now. We like we changed the name mm-hmm. of the country for that. <laughs> Here's Max Blumenthal, U.S. corporate media. Book burning is a powerful symbol. Yes. And so that's one aspect of the bigotry that this proxy war in Ukraine has exposed. So we saw the racism towards the global south, and now we see the bigotry towards Russian culture. Why well, is he saying it like this is a pretty – like what is the neutral terms on book burning there? <laughs> That's really like crazy. Like even just the most basic well, – you're a, you're a midwit liberal with yeah. a, a Ukraine flag and a BLM flag and all that stuff and you – like a, a Steven Spielberg, Indiana Jones level idea of Nazis, yeah. right? Remember when they're all burning the books and even the Nazi <laughs> girl is sad? Oh, they're burning books. That's terrible. I mean, I'm a Nazi, but that's insane. We'll pass that now. Well, speaking of Nazis, there's also this aspect of the Ukraine proxy war too, which is that Nazis have been completely whitewashed. And so, for example, the New York Times could, in July 2015, refer to the Azov Battalion of Ukraine as openly neo-Nazi. But now, huh. they're openly celebrated. Well, look at this. pretty great. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. This is New York Times back in 2015. The Azov group is openly neo-Nazi. White That's- Hammer... <laughs> that's the New York Times. Yes, White that, Hammer and the Trident. Of, what is that? <laughs> that's a, that's some symbols uh, that 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 are being brandished by Nazis like the Azov Battalion. Okay, so that t- hammer is a white <laughs> hammer, like like that, like a prison <laughs> Aryan gang kind of thing. I don't know. I okay. don't know actually. Uh, but uh, so New York Times, 2015, Azov, openly neo-Nazi. Pretty simple. New York Times, 2020, uh, 2022, Ukraine's celebrated Azov Battalion. <laughs> I've had an emotional reunion with their blue-eyed, blonde-haired wives and their blue-eyed children. Here's the Financial Times. Don't confuse patriotism and Nazism. Because we sure do. (laughs) Ukraine's Azov forces face scrutiny. Nationalist regiment with neo-Nazi roots has been instrumental in the resistance to Russia's invasion. Yes, they have. uh, Because that is the side that the U.S. has partnered with for a very, very long time especially over the last eight, eight years since the U.S. backed coup. Hey, don't confuse ISIS with radical Islam. That's another <laughs> message we'd like to... <laughs> Doing live stand-up comedy in Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Nashville, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, and Hartford, Connecticut. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets and become a premium member. Get access to all our content.